All right, in this video, I just want to talk a little bit about one-sided limits and um, a few different problems here. Uh, probably what I'll try to do is make some sense out of it by graphing, uh, but then also we'll, we'll just kind of talk about how you would do it algebraically. Um, you know, so try to have a, you know, how you would evaluate one of these limits, say, without resorting to graphing, but just to give some intuition. So um, let's look at part A here first. We've got a little piecewise function. So uh, we've got the function uh, f of x is going to be x plus 3 if x is less than or equal to 1. And then we've got uh, x squared minus 2x if x is greater than 1. And we want to figure out the limit as x approaches 1 from the left. Okay, so notice the little minus sign is kind of to the right and above. So what that means is we're coming from the left um, of our function. So, okay, well, we could graph this. Um, let's do a little rough sketch here. So if you think about y equals x plus 3, well, that's just going to be a line with a... Uh, y-intercept of 3, and a slope of 1. So, But notice it only looks like that for x less than or equal to 1. So if we plug in x equals 1, we would get the y value of 4. Okay, so there's going to be a point at 1, 4. Again, normally the line would just go on forever and ever and ever, but in this case, well, it's only valid for x coordinates less than or equal to 1. So we're, <clears throat> we're only going to get the left half of this nice little line. Um, likewise, you can think about graphing y equals x squared minus 2x. Well, to graph this one, you know, you could always maybe start plotting points. Notice if you plug 1 in, you would get 1 squared minus 2 times 1, which would be 1 minus 2, or negative 1. So there's negative 1. But since it's only valid for x strictly greater than 1, um, we're going to put a little open circle there. Um, we could also think about finding the vertex if you want to just make sure that your graph is really nice. Um, so remember to find the vertex of a parabola. We can use the formula negative b over 2a. So just to remind you of a few little algebra things here. So negative b over 2a, um, in this case, it says we would take the negative. And again, b is whatever the coefficient on the x term is. So we would get negative, um, negative 2 all over 2 times a. So in this case, a would be the coefficient in front of x squared, which is 1. So we would get 2 over 2, or positive 1. So actually, at the x coordinate of 1, we are finding our vertex. Um, since x squared is positive, we know that it's going to open upwards. So uh, we'll just make it open upwards. But again, it only looks like the parabola for x coordinates greater than 1. So I'm going to make it, uh, you know, just basically the right side of the parabola. All right, so now we've got a nice little picture. Again, there's our function f of x. Uh, again, this is kind of overkill to do the problem, I think. But again, you know, it's important to get, uh, uh, you know, some conceptual idea of what's going on here at the beginning. So, um, and I think a, a picture, as they say, is worth a thousand words. So we're looking at the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of our function. So again, from the left is what the little minus sign indicates. OK, well, so here's the x-coordinate of 1. Well, if I'm coming in from the left, that means I'm taking x-coordinates smaller, just a little smaller, than 1. Well, if I take x-values that are just a little bit smaller than 1, if I plug them into my function, or equivalently, I can think about the y-values on the graph, if we plug numbers just a little bit smaller than 1 in, well, what's going to happen to the y values? It looks to me like the y values are going to get closer and closer and closer to 4. Again, take x coordinates a little bit smaller than 1. You're going to get y values that could get closer and closer to 4. And that's going to be our solution. We would say the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of our function simply equals 4. That's all there is to it. Algebraically, what I would do, you know, to just do this, um, as in the previous video, we said if your functions are continuous at the point, you can just plug it in. Well, this isn't quite continuous at x equals 1 because it breaks. But again, you can still basically plug it in. So if I look at numbers, okay, so 1 from the left, again, that's numbers a little bit smaller than 1. Well, okay, so should I use the first formula, x plus 3, or the second formula, x squared minus 2x? Well, if I'm using uh, x coordinates that are a little bit smaller than 1, that would be x less than or equal to 1, and I should just use the first formula. So equivalently, I could say 
the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of our function. It says that would be the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of the x plus 3. And again, now if we simply plug in the number 1, we'll get 1 plus 3, or we'll get the answer 4. So again, the same way uh, to get the answer. Again, I think it's nice to have a, a little picture to go with it. Um, suppose, you know, so the question didn't ask this, but suppose we were asked what's the limit as x approaches 1 from the right. Well, if we do 1 from the right, now, okay, I'm taking x coordinates a little bit bigger than 1. Okay, so if I use x coordinates a little bit bigger than 1, now I'm kind of sitting on the graph of the parabola. And as x gets closer and closer to 1 from the right, the y coordinates are getting closer and closer and closer to negative 1. They never actually hit negative 1, but they get arbitrarily close to it. So we would say the limit as x approaches 1 from the right equals negative 1. Um, if the question had said, what's the limit as x approaches 1, and, and they didn't specify from the left or the right, recall the limit from the left side has to equal the limit from the right side at a point for the limit to exist. And since we're getting different values, negative 1 and 4, we would simply say the limit as x approaches 1. In this case, it does not exist. Okay, So uh, just to illustrate again graphically what's going on, algebraically what's going on, um, so certainly left hand or right hand limits can exist, but the limit itself may not exist. So. All right, I hope this example makes some sense. Um, I'm going to sketch the other ones as well, and again, just try to talk about how you can just, you know, also use the formula, because eventually, you know, this, this is really what you want to do, right? You don't want to have to sketch out every single graph every single time. Um, be much too complicated and much too time-consuming.